Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what, a, what an thing. What an incredible crowd when, when Carol and Jacob and, and Bonnie uh, came to me for, for the, the first time in planning this event. They were hoping, hoping that there would be 400 people that would attend this event. I'm proud to say that there were over a thousand of you here today and the standing room. And thank you, and thank you. It's, it's just unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you for a moment about lies. It has been 65 years since the fall of Nazi Germany, but the big lie theory of Joseph Goebbels, Hitler's propaganda minister, unfortunately still holds true. The Nazis said that if you repeat a falsehood aggressively and often enough, people will believe it. Make no mistake, a nuclear Iran is still the number one threat to the state of Israel. Yet right behind this aggressive and worldwide delegitimization movement, which relies heavily on the tactics behind the big lie, and by continually distorting and outright falsifying Israel's legitimate, historical, spiritual, cultural, and legal ties to the land, as well as de demonizing its human rights record, policies, and right to self-defense, this anti-Israel movement gains traction and spreads its vicious, its vicious message. But my friends, this movement is truly insidious. And it's also aided and comforted by people who think that they're trying to help Israel. And I'm thinking, frankly, of some of the Israeli academics, both within the state of Israel and in Europe, who are constantly leading boycotts. For example, the university boycott in England is led by Jews. And just last week, 150 Israeli academics signed a petition asking other academics to boycott the Israeli city of Ariel because it sits in the so-called West Bank. And I don't know if any of you are aware of a new book by Dr. Joyce Zonana, an academic, a professor at City College in New York, graduate of the University of Pennsylvania, who left Egypt as an infant and came to the United States. Left Egypt as an infant when all Jews were required to leave Egypt. She wrote a book lamenting about her wonderful homeland and also the fact that she had planned a family reunion in Cairo and the union had to be, the reunion had to be called off simply because of the vicious, the quote, vicious attack by Israel on this peace ship from Turkey. And Dr. Joyce Anana, mind you, talks about a glorious Egypt that she remembered remembered as an infant. She left Egypt when she was four months old. But forgets also to state that 90% of the Egyptian Jews in the so-called beautiful land that the Jews enjoyed were denied Egyptian citizenship merely because they were Jews. And let's talk about the American college campuses. What happened at the University of California in Berkeley and at Hampshire College. I may say also aided and abetted and led by Jewish students and also Jewish academics as well. And there are organizations that we've heard of, the Jewish Voice for Peace. There is an international Jewish anti-Zionist network that has branches in 15 countries, in 12 cities here in the United States and incredibly enough, includes some Holocaust survivors. We have, we have others, we have people, respected people, that we've all heard their names. Elisa Solomon, Tony Kushner, Adam Horowitz, Philip Weiss, Norm Chomsky, and of course, Norman Finkelstein, 
who one of our distinguished speakers, uh, Alan Dershowitz, uh, will probably mention in his remarks. These are people that have undermined and undermined the state of Israel. They've added fire and fuel to the efforts to boycott Israel, to try to delegitimize the state of Israel. But what can we do? And what can we do about it? And people are doing things about this. Good people and people like you are fighting back against this campaign and making a true difference. Just last month's advertisements about Israeli war crimes were slated to be carried by buses in downtown Seattle. These ads were to feature a group of children looking at a demolished building below the headline, Israeli war crimes, your tax dollars at work. But thanks to the efforts of vigilant individuals, the Jewish Federation of Greater Seattle and other organizations, this advertising campaign was canceled. The people in Seattle knew what they needed to be done and they did it. It is a stark lesson in what is possible when good people come together against this insidious campaign. And the best thing that we can do is to stand for Israel and to be with the people of Israel. And I'm proud to say that along with my good friend Sabi Behar, aided by Maxine Schwartz, we hope to be taking close to 1,000 members of our community to Israel as part of our federations. as part of our Federation's mega mission, Israel 2012. Let us all stand together as a people, not just here, but next year in Jerusalem and always. I hope everyone in this room will join us for this mission. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce the other co-chairman of this event, <clears throat> Michael Adler. Michael.